Hi folks, Scott Sager with you here on RTC TV4. Thanks for joining us. Today we have a special treat for you. We've got the Rochester Downtown Partnership, some of the members of this organization. We're going to find out what these folks do and uh, how it's helping to revitalize Rochester's downtown. We'll start over here. We'll kind of do a round robin and let everybody introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Mason Heidi. I work for Archer Investment Corporation out of Indianapolis. Um, I'm on the Economic Vitality Chair Committee. Um, and our goal is really to help bring businesses into the downtown as well as help um, current businesses with any needs they have. Excellent, excellent. Uh, my name is Bettina Zabel. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I also homeschool my three children. Um, I am the promotions lead with the Rochester Downtown Partnership. Excellent. Bettina, thank you. Yes. I'm Amy Rowe. I am the director of the Fulton County Chamber of Commerce, but I'm the 2016 and 2017 president okay. um, for the organization and transitioning actually out into ex officio. So. Okay, very good. And I'm Harry Webb. I've been chairman of the design committee for Rochester Downtown Partnership, um, and I'm transitioning into the president role for 2018. Excellent. And I'm Lance Nelson, and I'm with Edward Jones Investments on Main Street, and uh, I'm chair of the design committee this year. Excellent. So we've got a lot of committees going here. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's kind of uh, start at the beginning. What is Rochester Downtown Partnership? Um, let's go to the president, who will be ex officio yes. next year, yeah, yeah. Amy Rowe. <coughs> well, I, obviously I'm kind of a nerd. I brought my document here. I can't remember <laughs> everything. So. Our mission statement, which I think is absolutely essential, we often forget, I feel like we should repeat it every meeting, but um, what this states is that we're an alliance of community members focused on creating a positive atmosphere for the city of Rochester to stimulate economic development, enhance the quality of life, promote a center of activity, and support the preservation of downtown Rochester. So at the heart and core, that really is who we are. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think it was a brave decision back in, I think it was 2013, um, when the uh, chamber had decided to help to form this group. Excellent. Um, and so it's been obviously um, moving forward and evolving mm -hmm. um, ever since then. Absolutely. So into today with all the fun things that we have. So Yeah, well, just kind of segue right into a couple of those fun things and then back up. but. Recently, I know that we filmed uh, the Boo Fest. That was something that uh, came off last minute, but really one of the better Boo Fests we've had. The weather was nice, mm -hmm. a lot of contestants, and uh, of course we got to see Terry Lee dressed up as Forrest <laughs> Gump, which was priceless. Um, so uh, we enjoyed that. Now, the latest, of course, was the downtown holiday stroll. That and was Bettina. Bettina, hats off to you. Oh, I've been filming. You five communities for almost a decade now between the areas of Fulton County and just outside. And th that was exactly what I would look for in a, in a downtown holiday festival. There were more people than I've seen in years past. There were more events. There was something to do everywhere I turned. Quite frankly, I couldn't get my camera around to things fast <laughs> enough. We got the reindeer. We got the, the beautiful Centennial Park. Uh, we, we Santa's arrival, the band, the tree lighting, fun things like that. But there was caroling, there was strolling, there was ice sculpting happening that I didn't get to see. All sorts of great things happening in downtown. And to me, there is, as I'm walking through the crowd with my camera, there was a buzz. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've Absolutely. been waiting, and I mean that, I've been waiting to feel that buzz mm -hmm. for years. So to me, you know, my, I talked to my wife about it afterwards. I said, I think that they've really begun to break through. And you know how hard it is to get momentum in anything you do, whether it's RTC, whether it's a community organization, it simply takes time to get that momentum. And this was really something that I saw spark. So hats off to you about that. But again, that is one thing, just one small component of what Rochester Downtown Partnership is out there doing. And I think that's the essential part, the momentum. I've looked at that. So I started the position in 2015, mm -hmm. and I came in as the executive director in 2015 um, of both organizations. And then um, as we transitioned the organization into gaining more momentum, um, finding individuals who were willing to volunteer, because it's a volunteer organization, um, really clarifying what our mission was, helping to understand what our other partners in the community, what their missions mm -hmm. were, 
I can say, and, and Harry and I uh, spoke to Stephen Ray, who is our personal assistant. Uh, he's the grant writer that the Fulton County um, uh, that Fulton County pays for, mm -hmm. and we kind of asked him, "Give us a level of, you know, a grade card. Where are we compared to other?" Mm -hmm. um, someone who would have great perspective. Yeah, someone mm -hmm. who sees a lot of those Main Street organizations, and he said, "You know, y'all have come." A really far um, away and we've done a lot of good things uh, so I think that's great and now that I get to actually transition and just sit on the board mm -hmm. and understand what they're doing and Harry stepping up I think that's another season another great level um, of, of leadership change and momentum mm -hmm. and all the people sitting at this table or at this chair, um, <laughs> Bettina, I mean, she's the newest it's member. It's a couch. But it's a couch okay. with, close enough. <laughs> but, you know, Bettina being the newest member, um, basically having a home run for her very first event, I think that's a testimony. Golf clap. Yeah, yeah. Golf yeah. yes, 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 yes. Thanks. So I don't think she realizes how essential and important her role is for the organization. So. Excellent. I would have said dilly dilly, but I would have gotten copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, congratulations on a very successful first run. Thank you. Let's kind of back up just a little bit. Why? Why are you here? I, and I understand your mission statement, but why isn't that being covered by city council or the chamber mm -hmm. or something else? Mm -hmm. Why did we have to create a separate entity for this? I think that's got a lot of people confused. Yeah, I'm and there is some upset. valid, very valid reasons mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. you need to separate out a project like the downtown partnership. Sure. So what are some of those reasons, Harry? Well, the Rochester Downtown Partnership is actually modeled after as an Indiana Main Street organization. Okay. So people may uh, understand that term, Main Street, but um, Main Street is actually defined by Indiana's Department of Commerce and OCRA, and it's an essential organization that you have this level of organization at a local level if you want to receive any kind of federal or state dollars. They want to see that you're organized. Mm -hmm. They want to see that you're organized, that you have a common vision, and that you're moving to you know to solve those those problems mm -hmm. internally before they're going to apply those external dollars. And okay. so, um, in order to get we've we've had lots of studies done downtown, mm -hmm. um, but you know in, in fair criticism we have locked we've we've asked outside consultants to come into our community many times and say what do we want us to do because you know, we want to apply for this grant. What do we should what should we do? And uh, then we've received those great proposals and then it gets makes a nice book somewhere and nobody really adopts it and really it's the um, organization of a Main Street organization like Rochester Downtown Partnership is is then to take that vision and try to sell it to the community and say is this really and work through it we've got this consultants opinion now is this where the, our community wants to go and once we all get on the same page for what we want our downtown to be mm -hmm. um, then we can really start getting making some progress and that's um, the the design of this organization was not something we came up with this right. is a, um, a state really mandated standard um, we have we have to report um, every year to okra which is the um, organization office of, office of community and rural affairs i always struggle with that. <laughs> <laughs> but basically they're the money people from right. in indianapolis i thought and, it was something i put in soup I yeah, yeah. That's what I and thought the, yeah ocra <laughs> they uh but they do provide us with um support okay and there's lots of different uh, funding mechanisms um and having a well-established main street organization is the primary step in getting any of those dollars gotcha. so if you want the money you've got to be organized you've got to do your due diligence if you will and have uh, the people to play or in the vision in place because that increases your odds of getting those grant dollars. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, there's always been in the, in the community also a little bit of perception that maybe this organization may not have been needed or something, but mm -hmm. it's absolutely essential if okay. we want to go after those dollars. And it's really the reason when we look around us and say, how did Wabash do what they did? How did Warsaw do what mm -hmm. they did? How did Plymouth do what they did? How did Delphi do what they did? They all did it because they had a strong Main Street organization. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And they all, they all had chambers right. and all that. But, you know, the chambers are almost completely different. Right. Because the chamber, because we've kind of evolved out of the chamber, we are not part of the chamber. Mm -hmm. Amy has served a dual role mm -hmm. very effectively, but it's also maybe diluted our mission a little bit, and people think that we are a subcommittee of the chamber. Right. Like but, when Boothfest um, had that logo for chamber. Yeah. I mean, that was yeah. you know everyone's guilty of it. Right. It happens. So it, it is a you know common that people think that what we are doing is really a chamber thing, and it's mm -hmm. um, it is important that um, not that we. We are fully supportive of the chamber, and when, right. they, when they do events and that things like. But these are 
important that this is a completely separate organization and it's necessary for it, it makes a lot of logical sense to, that it has to start somewhere mm -hmm. and it's going to start with the people who have their fingers on the pulse of the community and that is typically your chamber of commerce and the chamber represents really the whole county yeah whereas our organization represents about seven blocks yeah so seven blocks of rochester yeah. we, are, we are downtown rochester we're defined from 8th street to 3rd street you know or okay. 9th street to 3rd street okay and very um, good and both sides you know, one block Madison. either side yeah. so that's basically the historic corridor of downtown is really the definition of this organization well very interesting um a couple of ways we can go with this but one of the things i want to talk about now is the the stakeholders mm -hmm. you've got a lot of them mm -hmm. you've got business owners you have residents you have city council you've got um you know the pedestrians the shoppers the everybody is a stakeholder in this so how do you as a group listen discern and make decisions that obviously you can't please everyone all the time we know this um, there are those who want more parking downtown there are those who want covered walkways downtown everyone has their thing that they want how does this group come together and define what those objectives really need to be I think for the you know I think that's where the work plan comes in okay. <laughs> I think that that's why okra asks us to do that mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that's a requirement of the Main Street organization is the annual report that Harry was speaking about but for the annual report you have to have a work plan that you decide upon and what we do with the help of Stephen Ray who is our mm -hmm. grant writer um, he is like I stated our personal assistant we were chosen to receive his assistance from a USDA loan oh, wow. for three years uh, Rochester Downtown Partnership has him as our personal assistant and the last uh, three years we have met uh, we invite our stakeholders so we invite the mayor we invite the county council the county commissioners uh -huh. we invite uh, the Times Theater group all of the organizations um, Fedco Redevelopment Commission mm -hmm. to come together uh, to hear what their plans are to understand where they would like to take things um, and to come to a consensus as to what makes the most sense because as Harry stated there's grants and there's only so many right um, and everybody's competing and for everybody's them. competing for them so we want to make sure that what actually we decide in a work plan that it is the most um, effective and relevant excellent and it's been helpful I think this year was probably the best I oh, would yeah. say we've this gone through the process a couple times now yeah. we're understanding you know and it's a big ball of clay sure you know, we are we've got lots of ideas you know but we can't possibly get them all right. done you yeah. know so it's important with the work plan to kind of start dialing down saying okay what can we take on and that's really what the design committee and, and RDP's done initially is what what can we do with no dollars mm -hmm. and, and have an impact mm -hmm. and now we're at that phase where hopefully we're going to start um, you know soliciting for money mm -hmm. so we can do more things mm -hmm. and as we can get more local dollars and then leverage some state and federal dollars we're going to start seeing a dramatic impact but we're going to need you know we're going to need a lot of hands on deck to pull yeah. this off because this is a, you not know, a this is a small committee right now right <laughs> and it branches out in each direction yeah but we need lots more bodies yeah i was going to say we've got five people here representing the the group but this is a community-based project this is something that you need to be involved in if you're watching this right now you need to be involved in it here in rochester and fulton county money mm -hmm. volunteers you've got your 501c3 status so a contribution mm -hmm. would actually be tax deductible mm -hmm. in the state of indiana correct that's right okay correct. volunteers what do you need volunteers to do other than feed reindeer <laughs> well, there's, there's there's three committees okay. that make up this organization. So we've got economic vitality, which mm -hmm. is Mason, yeah. which is Mason. We've got design, which is currently Lance, and then what's the promotions? Promotions, mm -hmm. and so the really, most important part. Wherever yes. somebody feels they have a niche that they can contribute, you know, mm -hmm. that yeah. everybody has their own little skill sure, set. Absolutely, and um, you know, put, pulling off what she did on on that weekend, you know, that holiday stroll takes a lot of people all at once yes, it does. to do it over a very short period of time and that's not an easy easy thing to pull off you know but um, so yeah there's always people needed in every one of these committees to um, as we carry it forward one of the you know the things we're going to be going after is a couple um, big grant dollars this year and if we get them um, it's going to take a lot to carry that project forward right so you're going to need even more so let's talk for a second then about you get $50,000 from Okra or someone. What does the group spend the money on? 
Now, I know that promotions can be expensive. I know that logistics can be expensive. There may be some fees that have to be paid for, I don't know, blocking roads if the county can't provide that or, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. You follow my point here is that there are a lot of ancillary costs that go with every single project you guys get involved in. So what beyond that are you spending the funds on? If someone were to make a $5,000 contribution to the Rochester Downtown Partnership today, mm -hmm. where where are they going to see the results of their funds? I mean, I'm trying to encourage you to give them $5,000. <laughs> well, I think by it the just way. depends on you know what they would like to contribute to. Okay. Obviously, they're able to to decide where their money wants to go. Okay. Um, there's a lot of different facets here. You know, promotions is just one part. Obviously, um, design is important. You know, there's a lot of downtown businesses that need some help. Okay. With you know signs and facades and mm -hmm. things like that. So that's a lot of um, where some of the money would go as well. I think. Okay. And so it's not just one area. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a lot of different areas that the the money can. Go. And of course, they have a say in what they want to see done with their income. Right. So, and that's why we have restricted and unrestricted. So that's where the accountants come in. Mm -hmm. okay. Obviously, being an organization, a five hundred one c three, and uh, receiving some county or actually redevelopment commission funds is what we receive right now for the facade grant program. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that we bring that money in. It's restricted to whatever specific task. So all the money that Bettina received for the. Um, holiday stroll mm -hmm. that was restricted for that specific expense so uh -huh. if somebody says hey I'd like to give money towards a booth fest we can put that into the QuickBooks and it will be spent towards that project Excellent. so that we can make sure that somebody gets to do what they want Excellent. Um, or if there's a match for a specific grant that Harry's going after mm -hmm. um, they can say hey can it be a match for this specific Excellent. Grant? now are these funds held like at the community foundation do you have a bank account how is this set up First Federal. First Federal. That is our bank. As, so. as a non-for-profit, mm -hmm. contributions can be collected there and go into that account for you. Mm -hmm. And again, if you're just to be clear here, they can be restricted or unrestricted. If you send in a contribution that's unrestricted, they can spend it on whatever they need. If you uh, send it in and you put Boofest or Holiday Tour or one of the other events that will be upcoming, that's where those dollars will be spent. So you get control, which you typically don't in most nonprofits. You give them their money or your money, they spend it how they need. So mm -hmm. it's nice to know you get a little bit of control on some of that as well. See, so Scott, on the design committee, we're mm -hmm. also looking for things like uh, benches, um, the light poles. Nice. Uh, I was going to ask about design. Overall, is that how the aesthetics of the downtown? Anything you can see. Okay. You know, we're looking at anything from the facades to bike racks, benches. Mm -hmm. um, uh, flower boxes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, streetscapes, mm -hmm. um, you know, alleyways, um, just about anything you can touch, feel, see. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, one of the things that we did last year, we came up with uh, the bike racks, mm -hmm. and they're not out yet, but this next year they'll be out, and uh, that's fully funded, so we'll be able to start seeing some progress. That's great. Uh, you know, if you can touch and feel something anyway and say, yeah. hey, we did this. Um, and, and this year we've got a few more things we want to see if we can work on. Wayfinding signs is another one. Nice. So, uh, but our committee tries to get that um, uh, that feel of, hey, we want these signs to all match mm -hmm. and, and have one design all the way through. Right. Or the, you know, we don't want a bunch of different right. types of bike racks. I understand. You know, we want Some uniformity to it all. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand it. When I was at IU, uh, they went through a transition where every department at every school at IU seemed to have their own version of the IU logo. <laughs> And so they paid some big consulting firm to come in, and all they did was cleaned up. You had two choices that you could use for logo. Similar, you need some uh, uniformity to it all so that you can see some progress, if nothing else. And some of the things you're talking about, um, the things that beautify, if you will, the city, um, that puts you in a position where those are things you see every day. That has a lot to do with the feel, if you will, that comes from the community when you drive in. Mm -hmm. um, I think we could all agree that as you drive south, or excuse me, north on Main Street now, and you see this beautiful park there at the corner of 9th and Main, gives you a little bit of a different feeling than it did a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So those things are important to the community. Um, talk to me about the facades. I know Harry's got a lot of work going on. We've seen others throughout uh, downtown Rochester having some facade work done. That was a very specific Main Street type of program, was it not? Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, I did uh, apply for an OCRA grant as an individual okay. building owner because we had a Main Street organization and we had a historic downtown that was scoring things and I had a historic building 
we submitted a, a grant application, and it was a 25% match. Okay, so um, you have to so put up your own money as well. I have put up. But um, so that's what we have been going through. But what are, we are intending to do for 2018 is to apply for what they call an MSRP grant, stands for Main Street Revital Revitalization um, Program. Program. Okay. Yep. Main Street Revitalization Program. And it could be a half million dollars. Wow. It hasn't been defined for 2018 yet, but it's, um, in 2017 it was 80% match. Really? So a building owner would be able to um, a apply for a project and only have to put 20% of the money in to do it. Um, so if we can if we can get that, and we've been told we have a very strong shot at it, mm -hmm. um, we're going to be able to take on a lot of projects in 2018. Yeah. Um, the number one focus would be the Times Theater. Okay. Uh, we'll be able to take on the marquee for them and the uh, exterior of that building, um, getting that building back to where it used to look. Um, and then and then we're going to have a call-out meeting for downtown business owner, building owners, mm -hmm. and they can come, and that's going to be happening here real soon, as soon as we get city council blessing. Mm -hmm. um, the city council will be, or the city will be the applicant, even though it won't be really city dollars. I follow. These are going to be state and federal dollars that are coming in, so it has to go to a, uh, an entity like the city as far as for disbursement of the funds. Mm and a whole audited, you know, it's a whole audited thing. So it has yeah. to follow into a municipality for it. But the, the money will come to the city. The city will dole it out to the different building owners. Um, and the building owners would have to apply a match to, to get the project done. But they can get windows replaced. They can get roofs fixed. They can get, um, and so hopefully we're going to see maybe 10 projects similar to what I've done at the drugstore. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, it'll, it should be, hopefully, a complete renovation of downtown Rochester. Now, you know, I think one of the important things is you can't apply for those things until you have these organizations right. in place. Yeah. And, and uh, a lot of people say, well, why, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. What's going on there? There's all these building blocks to... Yeah, you have to funds. have them. And that's one of the reasons that I invited the folks in from the downtown partnership is that there is confusion. Um, there's been a lot in the growth over the past five to mm -hmm. ten years of starting it out, seeing what you need to do. As Harry said, they applied for some of these grants prior to having an official organization and they were turned down and, and that was one of the reasons. So it has to start somewhere. There's a lot of, uh, oh, I don't want to say government red tape, but there's due diligence on their part to make sure that these funds are being distributed, that your that your group is organized and moving forward. So yeah, it's like um, a tool. That's what I, th yeah. I think. Often we talk about tools. We have a, a document. And I think you've seen that where it separates out each of the different organizations because that was one of the things that I felt like this year was a lot about clarity right. um, and helping folks understand why each of those organizations is essential and each of those organizations is a tool. Right. For example, the chamber is a tool to support the county. Mm -hmm. um, so is FEDCO. Mm -hmm. We have different but similar, similar missions. Mm -hmm. We complement each other. That's normal for economic development and chamber Absolutely. to work together in other places. That happens often. And then you have the downtown organization mm -hmm. and that's to help build up generally the municipality mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. there are other smaller communities that have that and the labor as Harry stated you know it's a tool to help take what is needed and to move it forward with that mm -hmm. labor um, also because state and federal funds need to be earmarked towards specific projects yes. I think that's the hardest thing about grants some people say well, why can't you just put money towards this it would be wonderful for the federal or state government to give us a large amount of money for whatever right. we wanted to do, right. but they themselves have to do strategic planning right. and they say, okay, there is a lack in this specific area, mm -hmm. so we're going to put funds towards that. I think that we forgot to mention that this was a national movement. So mm -hmm. when uh, economic development stopped being urban sprawl mm -hmm. and they realized they took all of the businesses out into the suburbs, they killed every single one of the downtowns. Mm -hmm. And the federal government said, oh my gosh, we got to figure out how to fix this. Right. So they started the National Main Street Organization. And so this is even bigger than just Indiana. Right. Um, and that money is earmarked as a tool to help us to revitalize a really essential piece of our community. I'll never forget a kid, and hopefully I don't start crying because I always cry when I talk <laughs> about kids. But I was um, talking to Bettina, I know it's horrible, but I was talking to Bettina about this. Um, one of the the young ones was walking um, downtown Rochester and looking at the park and he looked at me I'm gonna cry well, I hate this but he looked at me he goes you're gonna keep the decorations up right 
And I said, well, yeah, honey, why would we take them down? He goes, well, it just makes my heart feel so safe and warm. And Aww. I thought to myself, that is the funniest thing, but it's from the mouth of babes. Mm -hmm. It's not just children. I don't know how many people have messaged us and said, I just feel proud driving by this park. Absolutely. And Living in Rochester right now. It. And it's such a small thing, mm -hmm. but it doesn't take much to make people want to come together. And yeah. I think that's what we are all sitting here for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to bring Rochester together. We want to bring people to Rochester to create, you know, this awesome community. Right. You know, so and I think that's just, you know, it's not just the child. It's it's everyone. I it's think. the child that says it out loud. Yeah. Everybody else yeah. knows it in their yeah. heart, but they're not going to say it as not readily. Afraid to say it. Yeah, exactly. But I think that's the buzz that you speak about, and I think that's why it was brilliant for them to create a national mainstream organization and to create the state because it's it needed. is the heart of a community is their downtown. Yeah. It's what Harry Webb lives for with his cute little well, um, it's the pharmacy. Yeah, it's your floor mat of your, your front door. It is. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do with the rest of the house. If your front door has fallen off the hinges, then it's going to impact the entire look of the community. It is. When I, when I lived in Bloomington, um, I worked for uh, WTIU, which is the PBS station down there. And uh, one of my territories was Seymour, Indiana. I was home of John Cougar. Everyone knows Seymour, Indiana for that reason. But I had never been to Seymour. And I remember driving in the first day. And I saw a house of worship, a gun shop, and a pond. The only thing, by the way, in their downtown at that time, this was late 90s, the only thing was a pharmacy. Hmm. Literally everything along the way was emptied out. And I saw some of that when I moved back to Rochester back in 2007, or six, um, and it concerned me greatly. And what I've seen, not just this group, but the community do in this past 10 years is incredible because we identified the problem, then how do we fix it? And that takes some time to think, years in fact, to think about that and to think about the logistics that go in with whether it's money collection, whether it's which project gets priority, et cetera. So um, I think part of the confusion of what is Rochester Downtown Partnership came because we had a lot of things springing up at the same time. And they were all needed and they all had a place. Um, but I think we're in a position now where it's all beginning to gel. One of the things Harry mentioned, the uh, Downtown Theater Group, that is a separate entity. That is not the Rochester Downtown Partnership. That is a group whose mission is to restore that theater to some sort of grandeur where folks are going to come in, whether it's art, music, whatnot, they'll be coming to that facility. So the fact that your organization is not only up and running, but also to a point where you're looking at getting grant money in through your um, pathways that you've already established to assist with something like that, that's the synergy that we need here in this community, um, just across the board. And maybe it's the volunteer woodworker who comes and says, oh, I'll make signs for all this stuff. Maybe it's the, the local designer, whether it's a graphic designer, who can do some of the promotions. Um, it takes every piece of skill set that we have in this community to bring this back. Um, you know, we were, wife and I were watching a movie the other day and it showed an open air um, dance hall. And we, we kind of giggled because that's what Colonial used to look like. And, yeah. and I'm a big fan of Shirley Willard. Folks have seen me talk to her a million times. But she harkens back to those days. A lot of us still do harken back to days that I never saw. Mm -hmm. I don't, in, no one in this room saw. How do we get there again? How do we get there to make Rochester some sort of, I mean, not only for our own good, but for the rest of the world to come and admire? Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, I, I think, think we need to pull together. Yeah, yeah. pull yeah. together. Yeah. I think that's the important thing. We need community support. Yeah. Uh, we need people to come alongside us and, and you know, step up with us and yeah. move forward together, I think. And be on each other's teams. I think yeah. that's the thing is, you know, there's 92 counties out there in Indiana, and then we've got all the other states, you yeah. know, and so for us, when we look at it, what are the unique tools mm -hmm. that we can use to create what we would call maybe a niche market mm -hmm. or a boutique place? We've been a resort town for longer than probably all of us have been alive, mm -hmm. and I think it was just in the last few years that we've forgotten that we had a unique skill set, mm -hmm. that we were a place of rest, that we were a place that people came to for fun, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what happened and how we forgot our identity, but I think everybody in this room and I think others as well 
Um, I also, so since I'm transitioning down from this, I'll be transitioning um, to help the tourism mm -hmm. commission. Mm -hmm. That's another tool. Yeah, That's absolutely. money that is uniquely legislated by the county to be spent on marketing Fulton County. Mm -hmm. uh, money that we can understand what the Rochester Downtown Partnership is doing and help to um, talk about in a brochure. Mm -hmm. We're working on brochures to talk about the stuff that they're doing downtown and, and to have a billboard to direct people to downtown. Right. So it's that synergy to create something beautiful. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll be the one beautiful resort town, mm -hmm. rural community in the middle of 12 counties around us that mm -hmm. people want to come and rest. Um, that's bringing tax dollars, that's bringing individuals to come. Yeah. I think what people often forget too is the money doesn't have to always come from us. Right. Mm -mm. People, yeah. you know, we may be sitting at a poverty level that cannot sustain some of these businesses, but that's okay mm -hmm. as long as we're bringing folks in. Mm -hmm. Somebody could come 50 miles mm -hmm. um, from God knows where to come to Harry's uh, Pharmacy and mm -hmm. sustain that business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the and, local restaurants are a great example of mm -hmm. that, of, of drawing people in from out of town. And if you don't know, I spent 10 years in the restaurant uh, industry while I was at school and going to school at Indiana University which is God's country, by the way. I'll, I'll say that <laughs> for my friends who are pretty famous. Um, but, <laughs> sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. must be. <laughs> He's a Purdue fan here. <laughs> Harry's a Purdue fan, right? <laughs> well, once, once it all vectors, mm -hmm. and it's all pointing in the right direction, I think you're in a position where a you know everybody can scratch each other's back. And, and I want to get to the point that each county is fighting for these dollars mm -hmm. as a county. Sure. So we can't have infighting amongst ourselves. Right. We've got mm -hmm. to get that clear, nipped, and be moving forward so that we can present a face of assurance, organ organized, and deliberate. Mm -hmm. uh, because believe me, when they're getting these grant requests in, a lot of them are infighting, and they can see it in the paperwork that there's infighting. Well, we're going to do this, but. There's a possibility that we'll do that. A lot of, uh, I don't know, trying to be two faces and please two people at the same time. They can read that in those grants. They know. Sure. So, um, you know, we have to come together. And there's, I mean, that's just simply the bottom line. It doesn't matter if you are a business owner or if you are a um, business consumer, so to speak, where you come in. Mm -hmm. You have to be in a position where you're ready to support not only this organization, but the other organizations in Fulton County that are trying to make this better. Um, and I think it's growing pains too. I think that's mm -hmm. part of it. Sure. I, you know, we talk about how there's been so many miscommunications and, and so much um, whatever you know you want to call it, but I don't see that as bad per se. Mm -hmm. I see that as a sign that growth is happening. Mm -hmm. But there's always growing pains. Yeah. You know, as you are bringing on new organizations, as each organization is figuring out what boundaries they that they have and others have, mm -hmm. you're going to have those really awkward moments mm -hmm. and you're going to have really, and to have those awkward moments means there's passionate people. Right. There's people that actually have an opinion. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know that it's technically a bad thing. Right. If we live in that forever, it's a bad thing. But I think recognizing that in life in general, you're going to have those growing pains. You come together as a community, you recognize, well, we didn't know that that was an option or that that was a confusion. Now we understand that, we clarify, we move forward, mm -hmm. and we come together, like Matina says, um, putting those confusions in the behind us and knowing that we're stronger, um, more closely knit, because we walked through those awkward phases beside each other mm -hmm. and decided to continue to, to move towards a goal. Right, you went to battle together. Yeah, we battled together mm -hmm. instead of against each other yes. 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 and it takes a vision from the top down you yeah. know, from the mayor to yeah. the city council to rdp to the community all being supportive of this thing this is as intertwined as anything has, i've ever seen if we can get all that lined up to where we're all moving in the same direction yeah. then we're going to be successful the downtown's not going to be a place to come and get a soda at the fountain anymore. <laughs> Those days are gone. Um, there's not going to be well, shoes. There's not going to be shoe it. stores yeah. and dress shops lining the lining the downtown. But it's going to be a, hopefully a place for live, work, and play. Right. It's going to be a fun place to come. It's going to be a great place to come go eat. We already have a very strong uh, local restaurant oh, niche going on in our great. community. There really is a rival of many communities around us. So yeah. the restaurants that we're getting in yeah. in our downtown area. Uh, the next phase is to get some better apartments you know, yeah. where people want to live in the downtown area, not uh, not just low income, but right. uh, 
but a uh, a nice studio apartments where young and uh, um, retired early retirees mm -hmm. would want to live in a downtown where it's convenient and yeah. um, and fun and mm -hmm. safe. Mm -hmm. um, those are all the things that we're hopefully the building owners are going to be working yeah. uh, to where we can all have that common um, common goal. Absolutely. You touched on restaurants again, which brings me back to the thought. App that I lost after talking about God's country down there in Wilmington, <laughs> but um, and that is restaurants in general. We've had a lot open up lately. Um, you know, over the let's just say the past five years here in Fulton County and Rochester, we've had a lot open. We've seen some close already, but the folks out there need to know: restaurant business is not a high profit margin. Restaurant business is love and soul dedicated to food service, and it's a hospitality industry that doesn't pay a lot to the people who work there or the owners. I, I lived it, I've been there, it's not an easy thing to do. So my point is support your local restaurants because it wasn't Applebee's who moved in, it was some local folks who moved away, came back and brought restaurants to Fulton County and Rochester. Those folks are putting their livelihood on the line to provide this to Fulton County. So you got a choice between the big box food store or the local place please go to the local place every time. And it's not just the food And service. tell your friends. It's not just the food service places. Right. You know, I mean, there are some businesses here. You, know, you say there won't be any dress shops. I mean, right. Flirt sells plenty of clothes. Right. You sure. Know? Yeah. And yeah. you can go to Gerettis right. and get some awesome yes. soda, Italian sodas Absolutely. and stuff like that. Um, there are a lot of places that you can go here. And I know that that's um, not necessarily something I would have necessarily thought a year mm -hmm. or so ago. Um, but, I mean, even Enid's. I went into Enid's the other day. They have such a cute little area to buy, you know, wax um, for warmers and mm -hmm. things like that. There are plenty of places to go buy stocking stuffers or to go eat or to do here. And I think that that's something that a lot of people, you know, they don't see the the downtown being completely full of businesses, mm -hmm. so they just assume there's nothing to do. Right. There are things to do. You can, you know, you can walk around downtown, enjoy the park, go get a soda, go, you know, you can do those things mm -hmm. here. And of course, our goal is to expand that, you know, mm -hmm. make that something that's just um, more viable for not just us, but for people from Warsaw and everywhere else to come in and enjoy our town too, I think. Oh, absolutely. And I think that, again, you br we've broken the seal, if you will. We're starting that process, but it is a slow and gradual mm -hmm. process. Some things you'll see, perfect example is the holiday tour. Mm -hmm. um, that came about through just some sheer determination to mm -hmm. make it happen. Took some funding as well. Mm -hmm. Reindeers aren't cheap. No, they're no. not. Um, very expensive. They are very expensive. <laughs> but <laughs> it was worth it. And I think a lot of people in this community are willing to say, it's worth it for my child to be able to go see, or my grandchild to be able to go see a, a real live reindeer on the courthouse right. lot. Right, and it's just a small step. I mean, yeah. you know, I think when people see those type of events, they, you know, they think Rochester next time, they think of something to do. Yeah. They come in there, spend their dollars, that increases, you know, profit for everyone. Businesses might look at Rochester as a more viable solution instead Absolutely. of going somewhere else. And I think long term, that creates, you know, more tax dollars and people want to move here. Are, um, you know, those things just progress. Yep. And I you know, you have to look at some of these things long term, mm -hmm. or it's just not going to, you know, you're going to want to drop out the race too quickly, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, because you can burn out when you think just little projects. But if you look at the long term goal, I think that that's, you know, bringing the community together and creating a place where, you know, businesses will want to invest and people will want to drive a half an hour to go to and, and think that's important. Oh, very, I mean, pilot's very good a good point. example. That was one of the things that it just happened out of the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. No one pursued pilot, nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just, and there it is. And, you know, for when I think about that and I go out and I talk to the people, I think to myself, I think that we're starting to actually arrive. Mm -hmm. yeah. when, when a company comes mm -hmm. like that, you know that people are paying attention yep. because they are recognizing yep. we got a call, we got a call, Terry got a call from Culver. Mm -hmm asking about their next level business classes. I got a call from Pulaski County Chamber asking, how are we doing what we're doing with the chamber? Mm -hmm. We've gotten calls from these other places who are noticing that mm -hmm. things are happening. So like Bettina said, it is 
definitely a marathon and it can get exhausting mm -hmm. and you can turn and burn through volunteers because it's not always a fun job mm -hmm. um, you don't always receive accolades right. for everything you do um, but it's, it's kind of like filming you know? yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just going to keep going you know <laughs> yeah. 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 you can't better. sit back at the <laughs> end of building your project and go <laughs> yeah. look what we did yeah. no, that's not going to happen no, no. Just the next this, going, this should yeah. outlive all of us oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it, Herman Wells uh, who was still alive when I went to IU but uh, um, he was a grade of IU, been there since, I don't know, 1800, he'd been there forever. But Herman Wells started the IU um, Auditorium. The IU Auditorium is a wonderful facility. It, you can go in there to see rock concerts or operas and anything in between. And his point was this, and that is, it is quality of life that attracts new business, the smartest, the brightest, and the best. And I've heard that. I've heard that in city council meetings. I've heard that from Terry Lee at Economic mm -hmm. Development. I've heard that from the mayor. Mm -hmm. I believe in that. I believe that quality of life is important to attract the best and the brightest. Mm -hmm. We know the reality of Fulton County, Indiana. We are not the richest county in the state of Indiana. Mm -hmm. In fact, yeah. closer to the other end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. We know the number of, of families that are on free and reduced lunches in our school systems. We know. And nobody is turning their back on them. Mm -hmm. Everyone is saying, who can we get in here to give us higher wages at our manufacturing? Mm -hmm. But we also think about those that are here and we say, how is that going to affect those that are already here? Mm -hmm. And we have those conversations, which a lot of people wouldn't even have. We are holistic, and that's a very important thing, to approach it from all sides and fill in all holes. And all I can say as a member of this community is thank you because I've not been to any of your meetings. I've not volunteered any of my time. Granted, I've been running I'll around with a camera, <laughs> but, and I'm doing a lot in this community, but it's, it, I've not been involved, and I've watched from afar, and I'm quite impressed with what you guys have been able to do, despite the gobbledygook that's been thrown in your way. And, you know, when you're trying to create anything, some toes get stepped on. Mm -hmm. It's not intentional, it's not deliberate, it's not spiteful. It's just the nature of the beast. The growing pains. The growing pains, the growing as you pains. will. Yeah. So, Mason's been quiet over here. Let's focus on him for a minute. <laughs> Let's talk about economic vitality. What's it mean and how do we achieve it? Okay. Like I said, um, our job is to help new businesses mm -hmm. come into Rochester, either new businesses to the area or, you know, satellite office mm -hmm. for merchandise mm -hmm. um, and help retain businesses that are here. If they're struggling with something, you know, we're trying to become their go-between, come to us, we'll look at our resources and try to help you out, try gotcha. to keep you keep you going. Um, last year, looking at my work plan too, um, <laughs> last year we had two main focuses and that was, you know, kind of we were just starting out, so we wanted a building inventory for downtown, so we knew what we had, knew nice. what was vacant, for sale, rent, anything like that and a leakage report. Um, since we don't have the funding, we couldn't afford to do some of this stuff, so we teamed up with IUK uh, MBA program. Really? And so they they did a leakage report and peer analysis for us. And they got credit, and we got the report, and Nobody worked out. Anybody. Worked out for everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we, we have some good in, insights on that. Now talk um, to me about leakage report. What's that mean? Um, dollars in versus out. Okay. So if we're say restaurants say fulton county a lot of dollars are leaving fulton county to go to other if i'm going to plymouth to eat mm -hmm. that would be leakage, leakage. gotcha now. just so we're um, clear and it's not always out sometimes some industries or some sectors we have an inflow mm -hmm. which is you know ideal mm -hmm. um, so we got the leakage report done and we have a building inventory close to done um, i'm still trying to clean that up make sure, sure we have all the right information talk to some more of the building owners and you know figure out what their goals are right because some building owner may want a new restaurant to come in. Some people don't want to deal with a build out that mm -hmm. it takes to put a restaurant in and all the equipment and stuff. Um, so we're in that process right now of just making sure um, we have the building inventory lined up. If we have a new business approach us, we can look at our inventory and say, okay, you know, this spot would be good, this right. spot would be good, this one probably not. Right, you're doing all the hard work up front so that when they come and they call and they say, hey, we're looking for a place, you don't have to drive over Rochester figuring out where to put them. You've got a mm -hmm. list. Yep. So that, that's a long process to get that work done up front. And then to maintain it, of course, uh, 
building gets sold or somebody moves in or, or vacates. Um, so is this something that you have you have other members of your committee helping you with, or are you driving around? Are you walking the baby in the stroller and just jotting down the <laughs> sidewalk? <laughs> um, uh, Terry Lee okay. is on, on my committee. Um, he did part of the work. I did part of the work. Um, I mean, we used the GIS system uh -huh. to kind of get the, the groundwork of it. Great. Um, I believe Joe McCarter is joining us. Okay. Joe McCarter's a great person, just an asset. <laughs> so I still need to be with him, boss. meet with him this week or next, and yeah. get him caught up and everything. So Very small good. committee, but yeah. well, it's people who are again. We talk about this. Your fingers on the pulse. Scott Sager doing that might not be the best because I'm busy focused on you know what basketball game or or concert or whatnot. Joe and Terry. They're touching base with businesses. Mm -hmm. Of course, every new business that comes in needs some type of internet and phone service, so they typically get a call through our sales department to Joe, and he talks to them. But um, some good members on your committee, mm -hmm. some people with some intelligence and some perspective in the situation. And I think business owners out there who are interested in that leakage report, you know, should oh, reach out to Mason, and he can yeah, share with them how, how their current business stacks up. That's you know, great. Are you, you know, is your is your type of industry? strong in the community mm -hmm. or is there a lot of dollars leaving there's a lot of good information in that report no, I bet. you know and that, the other thing i think is really important is businesses that may be struggling uh, there's i think there's so many times where a business struggles and they don't reach out mm -hmm. and they just close their doors mm -hmm. but they don't reach out and they don't say hey you know what resources are available mm -hmm. there are absolute amazing resources available through FedCo, yeah. through the Chamber, through the Rochester Downtown Partnership. That's what Mason's team is going to do as well, is, is they're there to understand if you're struggling, mm -hmm. you know, besides that MSRP, we have a facade grant program. Mm -hmm. That's a smaller amount of money, but Uncorked did it, uh, Fulton County United Way did it, mm -hmm. CASA did it. So maybe you just want to beautify a little bit, mm -hmm. or maybe you need to take a business class. FedCo mm -hmm. offers the next level mm -hmm. business class for $99. Yeah, for it's, it is a great course. Many I have I have want. my certificate. I've been through it. It was great. And then you have access to USDA loans. Yeah. Uh, you can go and uh, apply for a competitive grant. Yeah. And so there are resources. And I think that if somebody is struggling, if a downtown business is struggling, mm -hmm. don't struggle alone. Yeah, that's, you know, a, that's a really out. good point, folks. Um, you know, hey, pride is one thing, but you, your vitality is another. And if you're in a position where your business is struggling, and it can be the big business or the small business, don't go through it alone. That's what we're here for. That's right. what this group is here for. Mm -hmm. We're not it's, just trying to attract competitors. We're trying to yeah. build I, up the ones. I who mean, are our, here. our goal is to fill the downtown with with businesses, new yeah. or old, yeah. and beautify it. Yeah. And if you're already there and struggling, it's going to be probably easier for us to find a way to help you out. Absolutely. Than to have you close your doors and we and us try to find someone to to yeah. fill your spot. I mean, that's sort of disheartening to have yeah. somebody I mean, who you didn't even know was struggling. And just they go didn't out reach business. out and mm -hmm. you think, oh my gosh, if you would have just talked to us, mm -hmm. we could have helped you. Mm -hmm. We could have done something. We can't do everything. Right. But You're as proactive as you can be as yes. a committee, as a But we don't know what we director, don't know. But, right. And the goal is to fill downtown with lots of different kinds of businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, we're a community that doesn't have just a ton of restaurants or, mm -hmm. you know, a ton of banks or mm -hmm. things like that. You know, we want a, something for everyone. And, yeah. You know, that, that way the competitive this is not quite as high as oh. you know, some of the other towns that you see like 20,000 banks you know mm -hmm. I mean you know that way you can do something yeah well it's something to do downtown mm -hmm. other than just bank and right. then when Bettina has holiday stroll then she has a million buildings for I them love to that. go and, I love and that. to yeah. you know to draw them down because that's really promotion is you know he's creating that he's beautifying and then she's bringing them down and we're all trying to keep everybody together there's a reason for every committee there's a reason it's a partnership because even within ourselves, each member, each committee is essential for ensuring the viability of the organization. Yeah. And that's why we exist, really. Oh, that's great. To have each other and to support our, our friends and family out there, our neighbors. Well, I, I tell my family um, all the time, it's, it's us against the world. <laughs> you know, you got to keep it Amen. tight. We got to be strong here so that we can go out and fight off this world that we're in. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing when it comes to this organization. It's Fulton County, Indiana, and the businesses and the people against the rest of the world. It's actually mm -hmm. downtown Rochester. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just, you know, it's a little smaller than Fulton County. 
It yeah. is. But the beautiful part about this, and I know that some folks, because I'm with the county, so the county perspective is some folks saying, why are you focusing so much on downtown Rochester? Mm -hmm. The beautiful part about this is that when you build up a municipality, mm -hmm. folks will come to that municipality. But that doesn't mean that a wayfinding sign that Lance is going to do mm -hmm. doesn't direct them over to mm -hmm. uh, Dilly's in Akron, right. you know, or um, Lighters Ford to the tavern mm -hmm. for you know, some random event that, yeah. you know. Or the best cheeseburger you'll ever have. Yeah, or to LMB Oasis. Is the beautiful part about it is is that Rochester may get them here, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean they're not going to stay here and, and go and figure out something else because there are so many unique parts about Fulton County. Mm -hmm. um, Rochester is the municipality, but there's just... That's the tool mm -hmm. to be able to yeah. vehicle. And we to are get talking about Rochester yes. downtown partnership yes, yes. here, so but we should give credence to, to that Rochester, specifically. Yes. But I do believe that this whole thing is going countywide. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, just to digress for a second, you're going into Kiwana and Akron and Talma and Lighters Ford like none of your predecessors, mm -hmm. um, and that was a that was a deliberate choice. You know, you during your transition or before you, they made it the Fulton County instead of just the Rochester Chamber of Commerce. We're seeing some things come from that. And um, that's why I'm actually stepping to Ex Officio, because mm -hmm. I get to focus on what mm -hmm. my organization was created for, mm -hmm. which is in support of what this organization is doing. Mm -hmm. This organization gets to launch and come into its full own um, and then I get to focus on the other stuff. It's not a bad break. It's not a bad transition. It's uh, growing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, now we've come to the point where there's enough to support on a county level mm -hmm. that we need to build out the team so that these folks can focus on the downtown, mm -hmm. and I get to focus on you know all of everywhere. Right, right. County, you've so. been wearing multiple, multiple hats, and, and some of that was needed, and some of it was just Amy wanting to hurt herself more, but <laughs> yeah, not really. Okay. She's a go-getter. She is, and we love it. I don't let grass grow under my feet. That's very, very true <laughs> statement about Amy. Um, let's talk some specifics here. If I want to volunteer, and I'm out there watching, I know I've been inspirational today, and so you're going to want to do that. <laughs> what phone number do we call? What email do we call? Who do we go and see to say, I'm ready to give up some of my time to make this better? Um, so we are actually transitioning that at the moment. Um, we're going to have a new website, hopefully, knock on wood, that's okay. going to have a better availability to um, to give money to. Okay. Um, so currently... Um, so we're working on you being able to make a donation online, but we're not there yet. Yeah, that's the, one of the things that we wanted to do is the current uh, website that we have, I guess, from what we understand, it's hard to um, donate. So um, any one of our emails, they can specifically send it to. Yeah. Um, you can just stop in the chamber office. Mm -hmm. and that's where our office is. Right. And, and drop off a donation there or mail it to the mm -hmm. Rochester Downtown And if Partnership. it's all right with you, as, as you're seeing this, folks, we'll put up the phone number for the chamber as well as the address. You can stop in there and talk to them. And I can give the current email, which will change. Mm -hmm. I'm hesitant to give the current. This is going to air for years to okay. come. So, so we, we can give the current email. And then also, just if you are convinced 100%, yeah. send us money to P.O. Box 975. P.O. Box 975. <laughs> we could, you know, we could. Checks made to Scott Segar. No. Yeah. <laughs> made to the Rochester Downtown Partnership. Rochester but, Downtown yeah. Partnership. You can put RDP. They'll understand. Yep. And in the line, if you have a, like, if there's a specific restricted project mm -hmm. that you would like to put that money towards, make sure that that's in the line. Yeah. Um, so if I wanted to buy benches, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. but if I wanted to buy benches, I can write a check, put a little note in there. I would like to this to go towards some benches. Mm -hmm. It might not be much, but um, and you're not going to refuse a ten dollar contribution. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are going to be doing benches and bike racks. Yeah. And we are yeah. right now in the process of ordering them. So, so we won't be putting people's names on them or anything, but right. there will be a you know just a. Could I could I could I have you do that if I paid extra money? <laughs> See, now we're talking. Your own bench is two thousand dollars. We'll own. put your name on a bench. <laughs> <laughs> Again, checks made out. This guy's sacred. Yeah. Check out the Facebook page. That's really probably the most. The most Thank you. Social media. Yeah, social media. That's the most active because. We started, so every organization transitions, mm -hmm. and so we are looking at transitioning to a new, more uh, friendly website, mm -hmm. a potential um, website, or excuse me, email um, combination that doesn't change every time a volunteer changes. Mm -hmm. So all of those pieces are now going to be looked at this year. Yeah. Um, but Facebook, we always keep that up. Okay. We always 
It's so Rochester Downtown Partnership. Mm-hmm. Okay, on mm-hmm. Facebook. I'm sure you're familiar with Facebook. Yeah, like our page. Like yeah. the page, Definitely. follow the yeah. page. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Send us some good tidings. Mm-hmm. No bad tidings, just good tidings. <laughs> Constructive criticism tidings are always yeah. welcome. Sure. Yeah. Well, um, you know, we've talked about quite a bit. Um, we need volunteers. We need some contributions. If you have questions about what the goals are, what the projects are, you can reach out to any of these folks here. Um, and be staying tuned, of course, for anything happening um, with regard to the new website or new emails that come across. Mm -hmm. Tourism is not part of Rochester Downtown Partnership, nor is is it a part of the Chamber of Commerce. It's completely, it's it's separate. It's a different tool. It's a different, so there's the hammer, there's the screwdriver, (laughs) there's the saw, like each of these are different tools. Absolutely. But you need... Hopefully she doesn't have any of them in her hand. (laughs) (laughs) Because we might be in trouble. But that's the thing is each of those tools is essential to create a beautiful product, right? So you have to have a hammer, you have to have a uh, screwdriver, and you have to have a saw. And each of those have their benefits, they have their purpose, their reasoning, and that's what we are attempting to get across is that each of these organizations does have a purpose, does have a benefit. We do have a document. If anybody's really interested in knowing all the specifics, they mm-hmm. can reach out to the chamber. I can have Beth um, give them the newly created documents um, that have the current economic development organizations, right. including the chamber and all of Tons the of transparency. If you mm-hmm. want to know, you can know. Yeah, just reach out. We'll there. send you the documents. You can look at it. And You talk with your hands. Just sit inside you. I talk with my hands. I know. So but it's, yeah. I'm worried for hair. Watch there. out for it. <laughs> <laughs> His eyes keep off. getting yeah. big. So, <laughs> I know. I'm trying to sit on my hands. Going to have to marry him up with Dave Colger and learn some self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been talking for a while, and, and it's, it's great information. I think I have a clearer vision. Um, you know, number one, it was needed in order to gain these grants but what's evolved from that is coalitions Mm -hmm. Um, you've had some splinters and some branches and some other things happening in parallel with you such as the times theater group such as some uh, some of the other things happening what is the next big event because I was really excited and I had to go and do a basketball game for during the holiday tour so I didn't get to see it all but when are you bringing someone to sculpt some ice again because that was kind of fun <laughs> they were awesome I mean I just love that company so yeah. much and the, the guys that did that um, I would love to eventually in the future have something in January and um, February because those are times that are really down times for yeah, people sure. you know um, and, then, and for your downtown so yeah, economically and, yeah Centennial Park is a, a, such a great asset yeah. I think it's a cute little area just to have something small doesn't mm-hmm. have to be big all the time mm-hmm. um, and I think that would be fun you know a couple weekends or something like that to, to bring people down um, and have something like that a lot of coming in the future here um, the Tina are meeting after this to talk about her her work plan she got thrown at the last minute yeah. so her work plan is kind of already <laughs> three days before boo fest they're like oh, you gotta do this yeah. and so get it done Come yes on. I'm like okay well, yeah. You know, when oh, you show up and all this stuff. She hit it out of the park. So yeah. she's yeah. got a big excuse I think she might be a little bit paranoid. made that mistake. <laughs> yes. like when I go shopping for my wife, yes. if I come back with everything, she'll send me again. And my husband said the same thing. You, That was just a little too much the first time. You know, now you've got, like, to keep going. Um, but I was just so excited. I mean, I have three kids, four kids, if you, and my stepdaughter, and I just wanted to create something that they would enjoy. And as a parent, I would think all kids would enjoy. and right. something that the parents would enjoy and that might eventually bring people here. Yeah. Um, you know, I live lived here for 10 years and um, I just want to have something that I'm proud of that my town can be proud of um, because I raised my kids here you know and I think it's important to create something that um, we can all rally behind you know and some of the traditions have left you know the brown barn festival is Mm -hmm. no more and Mm -hmm. some of these other traditions that we grew up with Mm -hmm. uh, that I knew my entire life but in true life Life changes, mm-hmm. seasons change. Mm-hmm. And change isn't always bad. No. It's no. hard. Yeah. But it's not always bad. Different, and you know, right. that sometimes there are reasons that people don't understand for these changes. Sure. And I think that that's important to remember because there's a lot of negativity sometimes with the round barn. Yeah. But I think that the, the ideas that we have for the future are going to be an asset to everyone, mm-hmm. you know, so. Just yeah. take some time. Like the Living Local Fest, I think yeah. that that's one of the fun things that kind of Gained came out. Gained some momentum of, as well this yeah, past year. Yeah, so we get to build on that. Glenn Goss is already barking up our, our <laughs> <laughs> door to ask, you know, if Bettina and I have decided the budget so he can work on right. putting oh, that great. together. So. Mm-hmm. Well, lots of great things happening here in Fulton County. Uh, anything else you guys would like to add from the downtown group? Well, I just want to say thank you to Harry because, uh, you know, the thing about all of this is if you don't have 
good, solid individuals to take those roles. He doesn't. He's not going to get paid right. to be the president <laughs> of the Rochester well, downtown no. partnership. <laughs> <laughs> he's, <out of> here. <laughs> he's not. He's not going to be. You know that. So all of the you know the work that's going to have to be done, and, and the other volunteers that are going to that are coming on, they don't get paid to do this. This is out of their the passion they have for the community, the mm -hmm. desire to make it better. So uh, be, having Harry decide to step up, that was such a blessing to me because you can hand off the baton knowing that mm -hmm. it's in good hands, knowing that Come somebody... Come back a year from now, we'll see if it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're, yeah. we're putting other people with them too, just to keep them straight, just in case. <laughs> but I just, you know, and thank you to every one of these folks yeah. and to the, the folks on the committee. Is that we have some really neat individuals that have come alongside us, um, even just from this strategic planning session, mm -hmm. new members, and I've been very proud um, of all the work that's been done and all the team members. And and thanks for all the chamber sponsors who have stepped up. Absolutely. Funded her salary mm -hmm. so she could help get this organization created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we wouldn't be here at all if, it, if the chamber would not have stepped up to do that role. Right. So It takes a village. I mean, it really does. It really does. It's, it's understanding what the necessity is and, and sometimes sacrificing mm -hmm. for that specific, you know, sometimes the county sacrificed while I was focusing on this. and But each sacrifice grew towards a benefit mm -hmm. because that's what, I mean, that's what dieting is all about, right? You sacrifice so you can get skinny. Mm -hmm. You have to sacrifice for growth, um, for forward progress. So. A lot of great people decided to come alongside the team. So we're Ten years from now, downtown Rochester is going to look dramatically different. Watch out, world, yeah. here we come. Yeah, <laughs> and we're not talking about flying cars. No. <laughs> you know, we're talking about a place that makes me feel warm and safe. Yes, like that mm -hmm. sweet little angel that made me cry, where it's inviting and, and you we're a success story of a rural community. We are. We That's are. what we want to What do. I want to hear next year, maybe not next year, maybe next year's. Um, a little too quick, but what I want to hear in the next few years is I want to be in Culver for a basketball game that we're filming. I want to hear someone say they're coming down to Rochester because we've got an awesome parade or we've got an awesome this or that. Mm -hmm. I heard some of that going into that weekend where we had our holiday stroll. Monterey, kudos to Monterey. Apparently they have a phenomenal lighted parade every year. <laughs> I heard four people just randomly tell me they were going over to Monterey for this parade. I think that those people are going to be shifting and coming to Rochester, and I think people from Monterey are going to be saying, we're going over to Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it's, again, it's taken a long time just to get to this point, and this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. So um, Mason, Bettina, Amy, Harry, Lance, thank you. Um, they don't do this for money. They don't do this for necessarily any personal gain. Uh, they do it because they care. And I know a lot of you out there do care. So step up. Okay. Make the contribution. If you don't have time, give money. If you don't have money, give time. Um, thoughts are always appreciated. And when you see any of these folks out there, I want you to thank them. Because they are working hard and they're working late into the night and they're working on 12 different projects at a time. By the way, they all have full-time real jobs. So, and lives outside of this. So, uh, pat on the back to all of you. Keep it up. I hope we've helped kind of clear the air on a little bit about what Rochester Downtown Partnership is, why it's so vital to what everything that's happening in this community. But um, you guys are giving back, and we appreciate that. I want to encourage everybody out there, especially this season, to give back. As we're in the end of the year, talk to your estate planners, because they can make big contributions this, kind of, this time of year. So <laughs> let us know if we can help at all here at RTC TV4. In the meantime, best of luck to you. Excuse me. Best of luck to you and all that you do here awesome. in Rochester. And thank you for allowing us the platform to share the story. You oh, no problem. You're, you'll so get a gracious. bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay in candy canes. Yeah, right. Thank you all very much for watching. <laughs> Tune in next time here on RTC TV4.